So it's June 2023 and you're just looking for the easiest ways to fix or reduce buffering on your Fire TV, Fire Stick, Android TV, any device where you stream content. Now it doesn't matter if you stream content from official applications like Netflix, like Disney Plus, or even your third party application. So let me give you my five top tips on exactly how to do that. First up, you have your internet speed or your internet bandwidth. Now you can have the best application, the best backend servers, the best front end, but if your own device doesn't have a good internet connection, you're always going to see some kind of buffering. Now the great thing on these Amazon devices, if you now go to network, you can press the play button here and we can see we have a built-in speed test. And as long as you can get around about 20 meg, that should be enough for HD streaming. So I can click on run test, click on yes, and this will now run that test in the background. Now, again, the reason why this is important is we have to make sure that your device does have enough bandwidth so your applications can properly stream the content, whether you're streaming from a local server or maybe a server in another country, your internet speed will affect whether you get buffering or not. Now, if you give mine a second, we can see my device has over 400 meg downstream, which is more than enough even for 4K streaming. So that's the first thing I would check on your device just to ensure that you have enough bandwidth. Now for the second thing, I would recommend ensuring that you don't have applications or too many applications running in the background. Now, as you know, on these smaller devices, especially some of the older Fire Sticks, they don't have much memory, they don't have much capacity. If you have too many things open in the background, you'll definitely notice your device run slow, which then ultimately means you'll probably experience some kind of buffering. Now, a great way for you to see what's open in the background is to use the free application called Background Apps and Process List. So I click on search, type in the word background. Here we can see it straight away. Let's click on that. This is what the application looks like. I can now open that up and we can see on my Fire TV Cube, I have 16 things open in the background. Now you can imagine that the more you use your application, the more applications that you open on your device, over time, this will greatly go up. In fact, do leave me a comment below if you open up this application, how many things you had running in the background. So all of these applications are running, they are consuming memory. Some of them may be consuming valuable CPU cycles. So ideally what you want to do is for stop them. Now this application does allow you to do that one at a time. So I can select this application here. I can now click on for stop. I can now press back and we can see the application is now removed from that list, which means it has properly stopped. Now, if you don't want to do this as a manual process, I have actually developed an application which will allow you to close all of those applications with one click. And that is the TDUK App Killer, which is available both on the Amazon App Stores and the Google Play Stores. As we can see very quickly, we are now connected. I can do a quick count. We can see 15 things running in the background. I can click on four stop all apps. We can see most of them have been killed. The remaining ones are my application itself. And these two applications were in my whitelist, which means they will never be stopped because I want to keep them running. Typically you do that for a VPN or maybe the mouse toggle. So my TDUK app killer won't stop those applications running, but we can see everything else was four stopped with one click. So if you want to check that out, do have a look in the video description or pinned comment. But the main point is we want to reduce these applications running in the background, which means our device will have more memory, which will then mean that we'll reduce the chance of getting buffering on our streaming applications. Next up, we have the option to change your streaming quality. So this really applies more for your third party streaming applications that if you do find that your 4K streams or even your 1080p streams are constantly buffering, then reducing that quality down to 720p will really help your device because the bandwidth required for 720p is a lot less, which means if you reduce the quality, you will actually hopefully help your device reduce buffering. And in most cases, you may be hard pressed to actually tell the difference between 720p and 1080p. Now along the same point, if you are somebody that uses third party applications, one of the key things about these free applications is, is that they connect to free servers. Now free servers, as you can imagine, because they are free, are typically oversubscribed. They don't have much bandwidth. The hardware specs are not great because they're free. And when you have so many people all trying to connect to the same server to watch these free streams, 
that is really just a recipe for everybody to get buffering. Now, one way around that is to use RD. Now, I'm not going to say the full word, but for people in the, the know, they know what this is. This is service that costs about, I think, $2 a month. And this will allow you to connect to premium file servers. Now, these file servers have much better bandwidth. They have much better specs. And because it's only for premium users, I've never seen anyone get buffering when using RD. The quality of the videos, the quality, the bit rate, the audio quality, everything is just 10 times better on those RD servers versus the free servers. So if you guys want to check that out, I will leave a link in the video description if you want to take a look. And in fact, I do have some free vouchers. If you leave a comment on this video, I will actually pick out five of you and give you those 30 day free vouchers so you can give RD a try. And nobody that I've known has tried RD, has not gone ahead and actually taken it out because it really is that good. Now, another thing you can do to reduce buffering is to also look at the hardware of your device. Now, I know people that are still using the second generation Fire TV stick and that device has definitely had a good innings. It's, it's a very old device. All of the updates from Amazon have really, I would say, made that device almost unusable. Now, when you add that to lots of applications running on that device, and if you're also trying to stream from third party sources, especially if you're using free servers, devices like that are just really going to struggle. So maybe just updating your device to a more modern device like the 4K Fire Stick Max, or maybe the second generation Fire TV Cube, or even the newer Cube. Or if you really want to take it to the next level, maybe something more powerful like an Nvidia Shield, that will greatly improve your streaming experience and really reduce the chance that you'll see any kind of buffering. And the final tip is just to give your device a fresh restart. So typically many people just use their Fire Stick, they open up the applications and then they just switch off their TV or maybe they press the home button and select sleep. Now in this day, all of those applications running, all of those processes that were open in the background, they remain on the device. Now a quick way for you to quickly flush everything out is just to hold the play and select buttons together the play and the select buttons, hold them down for eight seconds, and this will invoke a true device restart, which means everything will be properly shut down and your device will then restart. And hopefully when you restart, that will reduce the amount of things you have open in the background. And it's something maybe you can do once every few days, just to make sure that your device performs optimally as possible. And we can see my device has just restarted. And hopefully now with those things flushed in the background, that should improve the performance and of course reduce the chance of my device or my streaming applications seeing any kind of buffering. So that's pretty much for this video guys. Many thanks for watching. Do leave me a comment below if you have some other tips for buffering. Also let me know if you actually use RD and what you think of it and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.